Welcome to Project C Media High. My name is uh, Wavinia Wanyasa once again. I think this is the third, is it the third or the second? The second um, um, take on video. So yes, I am addressing the a certain agenda that is currently in Kenya. It's actually all over Africa. Uh, to be in particular, I was invited, given an invite for one right here in Kenya. And I remember the invite was really something that was properly blanketed to ensure that I did not get an idea of what it really was. So as a Kenya human rights, actually journalist, and we're talking about that as a journalist, I just want to read that in part, the invite. That's my invite. So, um, <clears throat> in part, it reads, the media plays a key role in ensuring that justice is achieved for the people. In Kenya, for a very long time, the church, underlying the word church, has been silent on matters to do with human rights abuse in Kenya, and especially women and specialized groups. It goes on to say, as journalists, we must stand up to our call and fight against human rights abuse in Kenya through our reporting. And then it goes on to say, we have picked 12 radio journalists, of whom I was the first, <laughs> to pilot the reporting on human rights abuse in Kenya. Again, underlying human rights abuse in Kenya. Now, the role of these journalists will be to work with faith leaders, mm -hmm. church leaders, uh -huh, and, and community leaders to fight human rights abuse in Kenya. The team below will, for the next nine months, be championing this great movement. And of course, it starts with Wavinia Bless, I Wonder Why. So when I got the invite, I knew it was a church thing, and the person that I even, you know, tried to contact to find, they said, no, no, it's actually, a, that's why we called you, it's a, a believer, a journalist who, um, you know, stand with the word and all that. So I go for this um, event at Hotel Boulevard. I was a little bit late. And so I found much of the discussion had ended. And so when I'm lining up to, in, in the line just to, 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 to get in, in the queue of food, because that's what people were doing, I see this lady behind me and I, I introduce myself. Hey, Wovinia, um, you know, from Truth FM, who are you? She introduces herself. I can't really remember her name. And she says, from the LGBTQI. I was like, what? LGB what? And I was like, so let me get this correct. Are we in the same forum? And she said, yes, that's why we invited you journalists to come and speak up for us. And I was like, I don't agree with that. I totally don't. And so to fast track, I got to settle with two of them. One of them is actually a pastor here in Kenya. Has a church. Has a church. It's Monday. Oh my goodness. Has a church in Karen. He's a pastor. A perv. A pastor. Oh my goodness. And um another senior pastor from america would you i mean i mean would you, are you surprised yeah. that this was actually sponsored all the way from the states yeah. and so i started having this conversation with this other one can't really remember his name i think i was so boiled up i forgot all my journalistic instincts and i was just thinking oh no you don't no you don't not in our ground so this guy we get in conversation and he's over here talking about, you know, uh, you know how it is that gays need to be protected in Kenya. He's like, well, then your people are dying. I'm like, can you just get to your point? Why did you invite me? Why was I invited for this? One, I don't believe in this crooked path that is intentionally selected. He said, no, he was born gay. Can you imagine? He goes on to tell me that he ha actually had a wife. He was married and has a son. And so I was like... When did you realize this weird thing in your life? And he said, I was forced into believing that I'm a man and I need to hang out with a woman, I need to marry a woman. I was like, I think it's just natural, out of the biological makeup, that you were born with your, um, you know, genitalia directing you toward who it is that you are. Because biologically speaking, by the fact of autonomy, you are a man. And a man who's supposed to be with a woman. You were not given functionalities of a woman. So what's really going on here? And he goes on to say, you know, that's just the culture in Kenya. It is not accepting of the gays. And I said, it's not just the culture of Kenya. You know, it's just sick. It's absurd. Any human being, atheist believer, non-believer, can see it. Even animals know there's a problem with a man going out with a man. 
And so he got really feisty. He was really pissed off with me because I kept throwing that questions. And he did not even want so much uh, to have this conversation with me. And I told him, rule, rule me up, rule out the idea of having an interview in my station. It can't work. And it's not going to work here in Kenya. You know why? Because we don't want shit from... Oh, forgive me. Oh, goodness, I did. I did I say that? We don't want... Yes, because that's exactly what they produce when they do... What, how do you... The math is just so absurd, you know? So, he gets really feisty and I told him, you know, I think you, you probably had a very... a terrible childhood. And he was like, no, he was actually raised by Seventh-day uh, Adventist pastors. He comes from a very strong Christian background, and he himself is a very strong Christian. And so we went to the Bible, and I said, that's funny that you are a Christian, so you believe in the Bible in a state, right? And I went on to ask, tell me about Sodom and Gomorrah. By this time, ha, his champ pastor had just joined him, the main pastor from the United States of A. Kind of looks like a... Yeah, so this is what he did. He he came in and pounced on this conversation and said, there is no way, there are better scriptures to make reference to as opposed to Sodom and Gomorrah. I said, why would don't you just want to answer about that? The father burnt the whole Sodom and Gomorrah because of sodomy. Why, why are you escaping that? He said, that was not the reason. According to him, get this, this is the joke, he actually destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of gang rape. I know. <laughs> I almost dropped off. This this hijab, but I just almost flipped. And I was like, oh my goodness. You have a narrative for every single thing just to justify what you do. So he went on to talk about Ruth and Naomi. I was like, what? Ruth, what? Naomi, mother-in-law, daughter? How are you putting this map? Talk about Jonathan, talked about I talked about David and Jonathan, and I, of course, they're now talking about Jesus and, and, and all. I was like, that's crappy. So I took him to Re Revelation, because he was debating everything, and kept on talking about, you know, the theologians who were writing the Bible in that day, did not mean it that way, we take the Bible out of context. I was like, so you think God loves you and your lifestyle? He said, yeah, God created. And they actually quoted a scripture that was talking about, um, there's one that he was talking about, uh, the Lord Yahusha saying that you know he's got another flock outside the Karen flock right there and I was like oh my goodness the old liner I mean they're known to use that so we took I took him to revelations and I asked him what, what say you about the Bible it's not only revelations that talks about that the sexual immoral and the, the, the homosexual shall have no place with God and right there that was it he couldn't answer and he boiled up and he kept looking like he could hit me because you know they start acting female and all this attitude the hormones start boiling up and I was like oh my goodness look at this I mean I was at that time I was dining with devils demons I remember telling a tool man that place smells like yeah my spiritual antennas were up and I couldn't smell anything but the they were yeah it was that bad it was terrible you know so the sad part was that there were church leaders there we had church leaders couples actually from you could tell from from different places in the um, uh, different parts of Nairobi you could tell mostly part part, part could be the pat the, the Kibera side and everything you can imagine and they were supporting their agenda because money was there and they were saying, yes, you know, we want to spread the love and everything. African pastors, oh my goodness, you show them money and you've, you've won their hearts, you know. I couldn't believe it. It was so bad. So we were like almost you know, thrown out and we fought. I just walked out. I was like, this is just too much. And they complained and said that we are arrogant. I'm an arrogant journalist. They've never met somebody like me. I think they regretted that day. And I'm so proud. I'm so excited that they did because I was very clear and I told them Kenya's not ready for this trash and it is sick. It is abnormal. You don't need spiritual lenses to see that. Animals can see that. The autonomy sees that and is wondering what you're doing. And the part that really fascinated me is what they want the Kenyan government to do for them. They say, first of all, they're recognized by the Constitution. Why? Because he use a clause, all persons. Duh. And then he goes on to say, because it actually covers them, 
they should be protected. They have scheme ways of coming through. So I ask protected from what? Exactly. If your ways are normal, what exactly do you want us to protect? He said he wouldn't want to have the police storm in on them while they're having that kind of behind banging kind of thing. It just sounds so icky and so wrong. He said, and let me quote his words. He said, while I'm having whatever with my husband, I wouldn't want a man. Can you yeah. hear What world are we living in? Yeah. So Kenya is at a place where we are under attack. We are under attack and people are asleep. And sadly, the pulpit is being used to, 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 to push this profanity. Pastors oh. are being used. Pastors are not reading the Bible anymore. They have switched ah. more and are now worshipping uh, the, 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 the mammon, the mammon, the mammon spirit of money. Because that's what I saw. It was a pathetic sight. If I could, I could stone people. If I, I had all this aggression around me, I couldn't believe how it is that we've got our own leaders who are selling the souls of the young people because I know they have a youthful, they'll probably start selling this agenda too. So this thing has sneaked in and they're trying to call themselves a Christian Pan-African something. And they're looking for, uh, you know, Christian stations to 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 to, to interview them. That's the biggest joke ever, because that's not happening in this country. So it's just good to alert you to let you know that this is what is happening. They're all over. I hear this was not the first meeting they had one before, and they continue to have some. Uh, they pay some journalists actually to try and push their agenda, but we're saying it's not happening. And if you are an LGBTQI. Not in our country. We, we, we don't want you here. We don't. We don't want trash. We don't want abnormality. We don't want craziness. We don't want Satan in our land. We're saying no to the devil. We're saying no to the LGBTQI. We're saying no to weirdness that is from the pit of hell. We're saying no. We're just saying no. So they need to pack up and leave immediately. Yes, I just think so. And I'm just praying. Just like Magufuli, the best president. Uhuru Kenyatta, please save our country from this madness. These queer guys are here twisting and turning and that would not have happened during the Moy era. That would not have happened um, during the, 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 the Kibaki era. So you can imagine what's really happening. Why are all these things happening under the watch of the current government? It tells you a lot. Think through it. And that's it from me today. Thank you.